All right, we're going to go back out to the guest line, and we're, we're going to bring in the boss man himself. And I have to offer this guy huge thanks for making this happen, for giving us the platform. Ethan J. Skolnick from the Five Reasons Sports Network is with us. Ethan, how you doing, sir? Can't figure out my camera, Alex. I, I know that's a surprise. Um, you, want, you want to see how this works? You ready? This is the boss. Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is the boss. There you go. That's the boss. I, I yeah, I just, go, I just, I I just logged in. Way. Yeah, I just logged into the private chat like to see if Ethan was ready. And the first thing I see is a message from Ethan that says, my camera is backwards. So, yeah, I mean, like... it's my, my life is backwards. Uh, it's it's good to be with you. Um, as I, I knew you would just sort of jump off with a running start here. I, I just, before we get into I know we want to talk heat. And I'm going to let you actually run your own show. Because Sean's used to me taking over other people's <laughs> shows. But I, I do want to say for people who are watching... Um, this is a little different for us. Like, I mean, we've, we've done podcasts. Obviously, Alex hosts Five Rings Canes. Uh, we have the night programming with all the streams um, that, that will still run. In fact, we, got it. we have a draft show tonight um, with, with Clutch Corner and Five on the Floor. But doing daily live uh, local is, uh, is a little bit of a departure for us. And so, you know, you're the guy we wanted you to start with. And, and then we'll be adding programming from here. But, um, you know, it's, that, that's kind of the direction we're going. So people are wondering... How is this different from what we were doing? What's different is you're going to be talking all sports, all Miami, a lot of Miami sports for an hour every day. That's not something we've typically done at Five Reasons in, in the three years since we started it. So, and uh, you know, forty minutes in, I'm having a blast already, and and uh, and I'm so glad that people are thanking Ethan in the chat, and uh, and I know that Manny and Sean and everybody involved are appreciative, and I know that the uh, the peanut gallery. Are, are anxious to talk some heat, but I, I have to I have to make you guys simmer on that for a second because I do want Ethan, I want mm. your take on this Xavier Howard situation from the statement he made mm. to what you think the Dolphins should do with him now. Well, uh, it's a little bit of a strange situation because I know his agent. Um, you know, I, I've I covered the Dolphins before I covered the Heat, and so I kind of know what David Cantor's trying to do here. I just think it was really clunkily executed, if that's a word. Um, I I don't. The statement to me does not engender support for Xavier Howard. I, you know, and, and I pulled it yesterday on, on our Twitter account, and like 70% said they're less sympathetic to Howard than they were prior to the statement. I, I'm typically a player's guy, but again, saying you didn't understand the contract at the time, I mean, that's not the Dolphins' problem. And also, the one line in there, you know, I'm just here so I don't get fined. I mean, thanks, Marshawn. Like, I, I don't... <laughs> I, I don't think, I mean, if you're trying, a lot of these negotiations are about public support. There's always a certain point where the owner can't take it anymore and makes a panic move or tells his GM to make a panic move. He didn't engender support for himself. In fact, I think that he engendered support for the Dolphins position. When you can make a case that Howard maybe deserves some sort of a restructure, you could look at it. Again, if you're going to give guaranteed money, that's going to smooth things over for the cap for the Dolphins. But I don't think that this helped him in any regard. And to me, if I'm the Dolphins, and I know he's sitting out with a minor injury today, if I'm the Dolphins, I just sit tight. Like, I, I, I don't feel like they have to do anything. Um, I, I, I would not make a panic move. And, and that's kind of where I'm at with it. Again, I know what Cantor's trying to do. Um, but remember, David has not had good dealings with the Dolphins at times in the past. Um, you know, you take a look at the, uh, the situation with Olivier Vernon. Um, there are a couple of others. There are some that are perceived as maybe more dolphin-friendly agents that are in the market, some of which you know. Uh, yeah. I, I, in this case, I, I don't necessarily know that this is going to lead to a, a good outcome. Oh, that's well said. Um, NBA draft is coming up tonight. Ethan, how busy do you think all of the great NBA reporters and writers from Five <laughs> R are going to be? Like, do you, do you think that Pat Riley is going to get the Heat a pick or two tonight, or are we going to end up going through two rounds with no Miami Heat picks the way things are scheduled right now? I would be surprised if they get a pick. I would not be surprised if they add a couple of players who we end up talking about in the future. Riley made that pretty clear. That you know, even if they don't have picks, that they are they they have targeted guys you know after the draft. And you know, if you go back a few years ago, whether it was a Tyler Johnson who I know became a punchline, but at the time he was a big success story. Like you look at the Tyler Johnson situation, they targeted him in the draft. They thought about acquiring a pick, but he had a terrible camp at Portsmouth, one of the camps that the players go to, and so they had a feeling he would slip through the cracks, and they were able to sign him. 
Duncan Robinson, our guy, Greg Sylvander, right? Liar Leaf, who sent Leif, who tends to know everything that's going on with the team. Uh, Leif reported that Duncan Robinson was a heat target on that draft night, and they ended mm. up acquiring him. He also reported last year that Max Struess was a, a player that the Heat liked. I wouldn't be surprised if they come out with a couple of players that we're talking about in the future, but I, I would not anticipate tonight uh, that there's going to be a, a trade for a pick. I, I don't think that's the direction they go, at least not a pick now. Um, right. Now, I, I do know that Riley and Andy have been looking around the league to get picks because you need picks. This is the whole problem with the Heat philosophy is that <laughs> it's one thing to say that you don't want to just keep bringing in young players that you've got to develop. But these days, picks are currency. It's not necessarily about the player you get. For teams that are trying to contend, it's about the, the, the disgruntled superstar that you have to have enough picks to be able to send to that team to acquire that player. <laughs> and so now the Heat are in, the, right? That's all it is. And so now the Heat are yeah. in. That's what happened with Harden, okay? That's what really happened. It wasn't about Hero and Robinson and not wanting to trade Tyler for James Harden. That was ridiculous. It was about not having the currency of all the swaps, of all the picks that they could do. So now you have a situation where all of these potential Heat targets, guys we've been talking about for the past couple of years, are now sort of available, right? Dame, I mean, Dame's going to make it clear our understanding over the next week that he wants out, okay? you got Dame. You've got Bradley Beal, a lot of smoke there, okay? And David mm -hmm. Aldridge writing kind of the getaway piece for Bradley Beal. Well, that's Beal's guy. Always look at the reporter that they're talking to. When Lillard talked to Chris Haynes, stuff gets out through certain reporters. It's because the player wants it out there, okay? Like, the same will happen with Xavier Howard, okay, down here. That's what, that's what these guys do. You know that. So, basically, you've got Lillard. You've got Beal. You've got these players around. You've got a Sexton, right, who there's some interest in. You've got... Uh, you know, maybe, you know, we've talked about, uh, you know, Brandon Ingram. OK, and, and I, I can confirm Adam's reporting on that. Brandon Ingram would like to play in Miami. So you've got all of these situations, but you don't have pick currency. So this is about trying to get pick currency. So could they trade for a future first tonight? Maybe. OK, and then that first gets flipped for something else as we move into trade and free agency season. I, I think that's more likely than targeting a particular player tonight. You know, I saw a report this week that was trying to link Ben Simmons to Miami. Can you please debunk? Because I had a minor panic attack when I saw it. <laughs> well, here's the only reason I gave it even the slightest bit of credibility is because Sam Amick, Sam Amick uh, with a K at the end, is, is a personal friend of mine, but he's also one of the really responsible national media guys, okay? Uh, but with that being said, no. OK, I mean, I, I think even if Pat has a fascination with Ben Simmons and he's the type of player he would have a fascination with, uh, Pat likes versatile, tall, I mean, point guard. I mean, he did coach a six foot nine point guard in L.A. for a little while. Right. I mean, he made a run at Lamar Odom like four times before he got him and he thought Lamar could be a point guard at one stage. Like I, I he, he, he the Ben Simmons fits his profile. Jimmy's not playing with Ben Simmons. again. No. <laughs> OK, so. I mean, you have to think about uh, everything this offseason in the Jimmy Butler context. Bam Adebayo second, but Jimmy first, okay? Jimmy is going to have a say in the direction that they go. This is a big reason for the Kyle Lowry fascination, which we've been talking about now for more than a year. Uh, that's somebody he would like to play with. I mean, don't be surprised if TJ McConnell comes – Greg's talked about this a lot – comes down here on short, short money. You know, I, They're going to build a team that Jimmy's comfortable with. This whole thing is about Jimmy and Bam, and that's it, okay? Everybody else could be let go, signed and traded, traded, Jimmy and Bam. And, and I do believe if you were to say to me, is Kyle Lowry going to be in a Heat uniform next year, I would say yes. Ooh, okay, well, let's elaborate on that because our own Adam Barai reported that he's looking for a three-year, $90 million deal. He is 35. And by the way, Barai's report, I then later saw reported by other folks, confirmed yes. by other folks. So he is so on his game, it's not even funny. Uh, concerned at all about giving that many years and that much money to a 35-year-old? Well, Adam also clarified with us, and yes, Barry and others did report it after. And I mean, that's a, it's a credible report. Um, that... Uh, Barry, did, uh, Adam did report with us that he doesn't, it, it might not necessarily be three for 90 for the Heat. Mm. Okay. That, that there are certain teams that it would be three for 90. That's what you asked for. But I think the ability to play with Jimmy, who, again, this is the godfather to a child. Okay. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is, you know, I mean, this is not just like a, a passing, you know, we sat on a bus at the Olympics relationship. You know, this is, a, this is basically Jimmy's closest friend in the entire league. Okay. 
um, that that to play here with him, I do think you could be looking at something shorter, two years plus a team op, maybe. Um, we know that the Heat like those team options. They they did it with uh, Myers Leonard, which I know a lot of people had the problem with that contract, but they did it also with Iguodala and with Dragic for the express purpose of being able to possibly move them because you can opt into that money in the third year and then that contract becomes tradable to reach a certain number to acquire a player that has a bigger contract. So I, I think that giving you know Lowry maybe – Maybe it's two for 55 that's guaranteed. And then the third year becomes a team option. I could see something in that space. Now, is it worth it? <laughs> it depends where you think they are in the, in the East hierarchy. It's worth it to keep Jimmy happy. Uh, it's worth it to give Bam a real point guard to set him up because I believe he needs that. Uh, I think that, and he also needs a point guard who's been there, who can tell Bam during a game, we're giving you the damn ball score. I don't think they have that guy on this roster. You know, I mean, Gore, it's not really Goran's personality, but also, I mean, let's just be honest with Goran and nobody is more respectful towards Goran, Goran's tenure than here. No one, than me, no one appreciates him more, but Goran is not a full-time starter anymore. We know that, right? So uh, to me, the only two guys in the free agent market who would be able to do that with Jimmy are, uh, excuse me, with Bam are Lowry and Conley. That's yeah. it. And, and it's more Lowry's personality than Conley's. Um, I, so from that aspect, from getting the most, not just in terms of making Jimmy happy, but getting the most out of Bam, it makes sense. Are people going to be annoyed about the contract in a year or two, Alex? Maybe. I mean, <laughs> yeah. but that's a chance you got to take. I mean, I, I, that's just kind of where you're at. I totally agree. By the way, can you uh, confirm, because I think we do have him booked for early next week, can you confirm that Adam Barai is a real person? Because I, I saw that, <laughs> that there are some folks questioning or doubting that. I've spoken to him on the phone before. Yes, that yes. could have easily been Ethan Skolnick doing a voice, so I, yeah. I haven't done a face-to-face -face with him. Can you confirm he's real? Um, I've never actually met Adam, um, as is the case with about half of the people in our network, so I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I've only... I've only met Greg once, I guess, because he can't, he he covered he covered for us at uh, at All Star. I can confirm I can confirm though that he has more Twitter accounts than any person I've ever met, and I'm gonna keep outing every single one of them uh, because it's annoying when he tweets responses to his own stuff. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so I mean, there's enough fakes of me, but like he's actually creating his own fakes. So, uh, but I do believe he exists. But I actually was with someone. Uh, last night who works inside the heat organization who told me that there are people who have asked him he knows it's a real person because he knows me who have asked him if adam barai actually exists or it's just a pseudonym for me <laughs> it is it is it is not the other person who exists by the way is brady hawk although sometimes that's a little hard to believe since he's i, I had him on i had him on video on monday i know he's I, real I mean, he's, I mean, he's met me over at Quarter Deck, which is our sponsor right here on 17th Street, which is where I was last night, by the way, Alex. Um, I saw try, that. That's try, so cool. Try the, try the dragon roll and get the, uh, get the chicken franchise. Happy 45th birthday, Shandell. But what I would say is uh, Brady is real, uh, and, and yet, and, and yet um, I mean, incredible. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think there's anybody doing better written work on the heat right now, to be honest. So, and that's one of the reasons I won't write again, because I don't want to be upstaged by a 17-year-old, but that's where we're at. <laughs> now, la last thing before we wrap it up with you. Uh, you're, a, you're a little older than me, but you're a lot less washed than me. Mm, How late, like, what's the latest Ethan Skolnick stays up to watch the start of a Team USA basketball game? Like, at 12.30 <laughs> start time, where do you, because I draw the line, Ethan, at like a 9 30 start what's the latest you stay up for that i mean they're not really we're, i'm up late anyway i don't really sleep unless i get that cbd from therapist preferred use the code five reasons 25 percent off look how i turned into a radio guy uh it's beautiful i i will just say that uh i don't really sleep more than three hours a night uh if i'm if i'm gonna stay up past 12 it's gonna be for a different reason than that i'll just leave it there <laughs> <laughs> could be any of could be any of five reasons to stay up. That's, uh, that's any of five that. reasons. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> he's Ethan Skolnick. You know where to find him. Of course, uh, he's he's either uh, tweeting from the Five Reasons Sports account or from Ethan J Skolnick. Ethan, thank you so much, man. Enjoy the rest of your day. Teach me how to find out of Barai, though. That's that's I, what I. You know how to find me. Everybody knows how to find. Yeah. Me. Teach me how to find him. Thanks, Alex. It's gonna be. A thank great you thing. so much.